ほらルフィ今一緒に海賊になる仲間を探してるんだIzumi gets a powerful quirk, and Izuku has no power of any sort. His so called best friends started to bully him and hate him for being weak from his point of view. Even though it was their full intention to keep him away from becoming a hero, so he won't get himself killed. Well, that all changed one day when turn seven. Izuku was laying in his old tattered room. Ever since his parents started to focus more on Izumi, they just barely remember to sometimes give him food. Izumi, as much as it's not heroic of him to hate someone, it would be her and the others. Happy birthday to you. Hearing the voices downstairs, the door opens. Mitsuki Bakugo, the mother of Katsuki and Katsumi Bakugo. Mitsuki, hey, little bean smiling, and Izuku just stayed curled up in the corner. Mitsuki was holding a plate. It had a cake on it. Izuku, hey, Auntie. Mitsuki's heart hurts seeing him like this. Inko was a terrific mother. But to start neglecting her own son, and no less Hisashi's boy, the man who she loved dearly, how can she even do this to him? Mitsuki, hey, I brought you some cake, trying to cheer him up. Izuku was nervous. What's cake? Will it hurt me? Shaking. Mitsuki, no, it's food. Izuku, I usually cook for myself. Why? Would you bring me food? Okay, now this has gone too far. Mitsuki, Izuku, come here. It's what a mother should do for her child pulling him out of the corner. She sees his notebook labeled issue number 13 cyberware. Mitsuki, hey, what's that? Pointing at the notebook and Izuku immediately tries to hide it. Izuku, please don't destroy it. I don't it to be gone, panicking. Mitsuki, it's okay, Izu. I won't destroy it. I'm just curious, and Izuku hesitated for a moment, and he soon brings it to her. Izuku, it's just some dumb ideas anyway, and she looks into it. Cyberware number two, Gorilla Fist. When I look at All Might, he has some super strength. Being able to lift multiple people and even buildings. What if I can have metal hands? That could give me the same strength as a gorilla. But dad doesn't like it when I talk about it. He says it's not heroic to think of it. I want to become a hero. I want to. And this is my road to do it. Looking at the design and even coding from a seven year old, no less, is highly detailed to the last screw. Looking at the design made her realize how smart he really is. Mitsuki. Do you still want to become a hero, Izuku? And he slowly nods. Mitsuki hands the book back to him, if that's the case. I sure you'll be a great hero, Izuku, and soon he starts to cry before jumping into her arms, hugging her tightly. Izuku, thank you, Auntie. Mitsuki could only smile. But then again, she frowns, knowing she's going to punish those two again. What they're doing to this boy? It's wrong. She's trying to get Rei to help. But she's dealing with her demons right now. Katsumi enters the room. Mom, Mom, Katsuki is being mean to Izumi again, pouting. Mitsuki, asterisk, sigh, asterisk. All right. Izuku, you don't have to go out, okay? And you young lady are coming with me as well, and soon Katsumi scowls at him. And he shivers behind his bed frame, and the two of them exit the room. Izuku was still breathing heavy. He doesn't want to be in this place anymore. He doesn't want to live in fear anymore. He wants to try and become a hero. He wants to try. Soon it ends from here. Izumi, you Deku entering the room along with Shoto, Shoka, and Bakugo. Izumi, heard you still want to be a hero. You really think you can become one without a quirk? Bakugo, my mom is only nice to Yuyu because of how pathetically weak you are, like my dad. 
Soon he walks over to him and he picks him up. Shoto, give it up Deku. You can't be a hero, so deal with it. And soon he freezes one of his feet to the floor. Izuku, no, 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 please stop it, crying out now. Bakugo lets out an explosion and it hits his abdomen burning his shirt and then he was picked up by Izumi's quirk. Izumi, what can you do against those with quirks? You can't even take us down, HM. Even your dad didn't want you. Maybe that's why he killed himself and soon after Izuka's world turned red. Hearing her say this about his father was the last straw. He was killed in a plane bombing. So hearing this, he reels his fist back. Izuku, you. Izumi, HM? Izuku, jerk. And he punches her off. Soon he grabs his notebook and the bag he had packed up. Soon he jumps out of the window. Katsumi and the others stared in shock. He fought back. He fought back. Soon the door opens. Yagi, what's going on in here? Looking at the four of them, seeing them in shock, still looking at the open window. Inko, W. What happened, Izumi? Izumi, he he. Inko, what? Izumi starts crying. He jumped out the window. Inko, who jumped out the window? Yagi, was someone in here? Soon he was smacked by Mitsuki. Mitsuki, you idiots. It's your son. And they both froze. They both forgot about Izuku Mitsuki just walks past them and she looks out the window. Worried for Izuku now shit she turns to Inko. Mitsuki, Inko, call in someone. Police. Heroes. Anyone please. And she nods getting out her cell phone soon Fayumi Todoroki walks in the room as well. Fayumi, what's happening? Asked the young teen. Shoto and Shoka froze. Fayumi looks down at their feet trying to hide something. Fayumi, Shoto. Shoka, what's that behind you? And soon this caught the other parents' attention. Shoto, HM? Shoka, what do you mean? Nervous about it, they feel a chill going up their spines as they shiver a little. Fayumi, what? Is? Behind you? Giving them the death stare she picked up from Taya. Soon they both had their heads down and moved aside as Fayumi sees the ice on the floor that was broken. Fayumi Shoka, did you do this? And she was silent she was about to say something until. Shoto, I did it. Fayumi, you did it. Why? Soon Mitsuki sees the burnt mark on the wall and some soot. Mitsuki, Katsuki Bakugo, what is with the soot? And Masaru also notices as well. Masaru, Katsuki he growled out and Mitsuki knows that tone. He rarely ever gets mad about anything. She's learned it when they both used to be in high school. It taught her that the one person who is always calm and collected can be terrifying when mad. The twins know as well. Katsumi, well, um he, was shocked seeing Izuku jump out the window. Masaru, I didn't ask you Katsumi. Katsuki. Why, is, there, soot, on, the wall growling now, his shadow over both of them. Katsuki, we, we tried to keep him becoming a hero, he blurted out. Inko, what? Izumi, we, we, had this idea, that if we could show him why he can't become a hero, we, used our quirks on him and this shocked them all. Inko gasped. Yagi, how long has this been going on? He said. Inko, Izumi Yagi, you have five seconds to say it or you'll be in even more trouble than this. Izumi, ever since. The quirk test assessment she looks down in shame. They couldn't believe this. This has been going on for three years and they did nothing about it. Mitsuki, how? How could you even that stupid and not to think that? Now yelling at them. Fayumi. I'm going to tell mom about this you too. She'll definitely want to talk about this with you both. Yagi, Izumi, I, I don't know what to say. How about you try to make up some lame ass excuse string to defend why you abandoned and neglected a child for years. They all turn to the doorway to see a scruffy looking man with a woman that has light green hair. Yagi, Shota, Inko, 
Oh, thank God, Shota, you're here. Soon he puts a hand in front of them. Aizawa, you're part of this problem, all of you. Now tell me why and soon they ended up being in this whole argument about how Izuku was trying to become a hero, even without a quirk, and why it would not work at all. Of course Yagi tried to say he didn't really show effort in trying to pursue his dream, but it was shot down by the fact the four little shits made his self-confidence sink further below the Mariana Trench. But one thing remains. Aizawa, as much as I lost respect for you both, we need to find your son. Before he does something to himself. Or worse and Hay nodded he called in a couple of friends. As midnight and present Mike also helped out trying to look for him. Of oh, course the only photo Inko has of Izuku was the day before his quirk diagnosis test. He should look a little more taller, but they try to keep a lookout. Izuku ran. He ran with all the strength in his body, even when his legs are telling him to stop. But no, he kept on going, crying out all the tears. He was scared. He can feel them running after him, which made him run even more creating a paradox. Soon he ends up near the shipyards and he sits down at a street light trying to breathe. Izuku keeps looking in the direction he ran, expecting to see them coming to hurt him again. Izuku, I need, I need, I need to get out of here, sobbing more. He soon sees one of the cargo ships ready to depart. The shipment is ready, sir, he listens in on the conversation. Thank you. So our next shipment is great. Night City, Night City. Where's that place? Says here. In America, America. That's where his father used to work at. Maybe if he could ask for help there, they could possibly be his chance of becoming a hero soon. He sneaks past the guards and other workers there, and he sees the cargo ship reeling in the anchor. So in one quick motion he jumps on the anchor and crawls to the top, and he hides in one of the containers. And soon, the ship departs. His destination is Night City. He hopes it won't be as bad here. He takes out his bag, and it just had his All Might figure and a small map. He takes out the map and opens it. Using the small lead light he brought, looking at the map he sees where he is, and then looks more. And soon, he found it, and it says, Night City City of Dreams, maybe this will be his new start in life his second chance. Yes, this is an opportunity he will take for sure. But then he thinks about the very few people who care for him. Will they even care that he's gone? Maybe not. He's quirkless anyway. They won't miss a worthless weakling like him. And then he sees the city in a distance. He felt really good, like a huge weight was taken off his shoulder. It truly felt like he had finally gotten away from them all especially them. They are villains. He couldn't help but hate them even more now. They had chased him away. His family doesn't love him or even aware that he exists. No, they lost their chance. He will never forgive them for what they did. Sure they say that time heals the wound. But what about the scars? You can't fix that. Once it's there, it will always be there. No matter how hard you try to forgive them, the pain will still remain. He took this chance to finally rest, laying on one of the small boxes. It actually felt comfortable that the dirty sheets that was never washed. And soon he drifted to sleep. Three days later. The case of one Izuku Midoriya who had run away from home was never found. Of course to the police it was a waste of time. Especially when they found out he was quirkless. So they call it off. And much to Aizawa's anger. He also had to prepare for his new job at Yua, the one where Nezu blackmailed him to take. Of course the threat was simple. He would use the time he and Emmy were exchanging list off who was in the tournament and also were forbidden from interacting with students that aren't in their school during the event. So he had to stop as well and Emmy kept looking for him, until she had to work as well. Izumiyagi now had to work harder to join Yua especially when the elementary school didn't acknowledge his absence. They didn't care about a quirkless going missing. Both Shoto and Shoka were punished dearly by their father after hearing this. He had them fight him for four hours straight, non-stop, with Taoya. 
Katsuki and Katsumi Bakugo are grounded from entering any sort of event with their school. And of course their dream of trying to go to you, A is there. But they also had some hate developed when Katsumi told Katsuki how their mom treated Izuku more like her own son than them. And as for Yagi, he was now on a broken bridge. I because of this action Nezu immediately along with Naitai and Gran Torino are now making him try and look for a new successor. Since the defeat of All for One, he's been looking non-stop since. Izuku awoke from his slumber again from the sound of the ship horn blaring. He looks out the container and see it. Night City. The city of dreams. He was actually excited now. Soon the ship docks and then he took this chance to jump off. And he runs up to a small diesel. Climbing into it, he waits for it to take off. And soon it heads for the city. He ends up in a place called Izuku He. Why? Wook? No, it's actually Haywood. Izuku gets off soon he's alone again, wandering the streets, although he was scared now. He really didn't know what he got himself into. He walked along the street until... Bang bang! Hearing gunfire in the distance and some people are yelling. It was a shootout. Come Chica, we need to Delta. He looks over to see two teens running out of the store nearby. They were getting shot at. Jackie keep going. And soon they ran into his direction Izuku fell back for the moment and he sits there frozen. Soon the teens see him. Hey Chimako, you need to get out. He couldn't understand what they're saying. Izuku, what? But the girl was panicking. Jackie, he speaks Japanese. We need to bring the kid pronto. Soon they hear the screams growing louder. And the guy named Jackie picks him up. Jackie, I, I, Chika. Always wanted a little bro and Izuku was scared, he felt like he just gotten into a lot of trouble. Izuku, what's going on? Who are you people? He shouted. Can't understand you kid, but trust us. Izuku was scared and now crying once more. Soon they turn an area and a car pulls up and two guys with guns pointed at them, they both stop. Jackie, Hijo Deputa. You learn not to mess with the wrong people you punks a guy wearing weird clothing walked up to them. Hey, how are we supposed to know there was tiger claw territory nearby him? I don't care. As my mother always say and soon he speaks Japanese. You don't mess with strangers. Izuku, could you tell them to let me go? He shouted and he asked. Why don't shut your god a mouth you little shit? He shouted back. Jackie. Hey, whatever you said. Probably isn't nice. I don't give a damn what you think. Soon the girl smiles. Yeah, but there is one thing you didn't account for. Ha ha ha, and what's that? And soon a gun was pointed behind his head. You don't mess with the Valentinos and soon they all froze. Izuku, what's going on, he thought. Soon he was too frightened hearing more gunshots thinking this was his time. He was going to die so he faints from shock. Izuku, mm, huh, he sits up and looks around. He was in someone's home looking around. Was he caught? What happened? Did those two teens die? Ah, you are awake, he turns to see an older woman, who seems about the same age as his mother but again, she was speaking English, so he doesn't understand what she's saying. She kneels down to him and he was scared preparing to get hit as he remembered what Izumi did to him soon he felt a blanket wrap around him. You poor thing, and at such a young age, she was comforting him, and he was afraid. It's all right, Mijo. I'm not going to hurt you, Izuku, then hears that she was not like the rest of them. She was nice and felt more like a mother if that's what it feels like, but then the door suddenly opens. To a man who's very large? Who's the little shit? He said to her. He's going to be leaving soon. I don't care you puta before he smacks her again. Izuku tried to go up to her, but she warns him not to he heads for the door. See? Even he doesn't want to be here with you, but as he was about to hit her again, a bullet went into his head and he fell over Izuku looks over to see the Jackie dude standing there. Jackie. 
No more will you hurt her, and soon they all stood there in silence. Then Jackie's mom, he thought goes up to the phone, to make a call. Mama Wells, I need a body removed. Yes, send him. Also, put Wakako on the phone. What's going on? Izuku was still shocked from seeing someone die in front of him. Where is this place? What is it? Why is everything so, so, cruel? Soon the front door opens again and a gang of people come in. Sonora Wells and they were shown the body. So Jackie Boy finally had guts to finish it. Soon they professionally cleaned up everything. Izuku could only stare in awe at how proficient they were at this. It scared him honestly. How many times have they done this? Where are the heroes? But that will be answered soon when the same girl that was with Jackie came in. I'm here for the kid. Jackie, I need to come to Chica. Lots of things on my mind. Soon she gestures Izuku to follow them. He looks back at the woman and she nods. Okay, this is really getting out of hand. So he follows them to the car. Where Jackie just heads out for a walk, the girl pulls Izuku into the car. All right, kid. Good luck out there, all right. He still doesn't know what she's saying. Soon the car takes him towards a larger part of the city, where a sign reads, Welcome to Japantown O, so he should be able to understand this place then. Of course it came to a stop at. Jig Jig Street Jig Jig. Oh well the driver opens his door and he comes out. Soon he is introduced to another man. Is this the one? He asked, and he nods soon he kneels down to Izuku's level. You speak Japanese, correct? He spoke to him. Izuku, yes, and he nods. All right, you will come with me then. Soon he follows the man, and what he wasn't expecting. Was the amount of asterisk ahim asterisk dancers are there being displayed like a clothing shop? Some of them were high drunk, or just plain weird. He stayed a little close to the man. Soon they enter, and he sees a woman on a phone talking to someone. In English, of course. I have brought your gift, Wakako, and she hangs up and she looks at Izuku. Wakako, ah, I see you brought in a young one. Soon he speaks in Japanese. Wakako, I am Wakako Okada. What is yours, little one? She asked. Izuku, I, Izuku Midoriya, and she was surprised. Wakako, Midoriya, the you have brought me something more important. You have brought me the son of the once famous Firedrake Firedrake. That's his dad's hero name. Izuku, you know my father? And she smiles. Wakako, he was a regular here. Whenever he wanted something I would give it to him. Now then, Midoriya, you must be here for a reason. You're far away from home. Why have you come here? Izuku, my life. Back at home is horrible. I hate it there. My family stopped caring for me, and my siblings wanted to hurt me. I wanted to get away. I had to get away. Wakako, I can tell you have more to say, but I will not pry. Only one question and he waits. Wakako, how you feel about staying here with me? She asked him. Izuku, if, if you knew my father, I want to stay then and she smirks. Wakako, of course there is. Something you need to do if you want to stay here. You will be trained to become a mercenary. Izuku, a eh? Mercenary? Wakako, you trade blood for money. You will steal, kill, or kidnap people for a decent price. Izuku, but that's not what being a hero means. Wakako, of course. But that type of attitude is not useful here. You will learn soon. You will learn and so, that day. Izuku has found himself a new hell to live in, but one that he doesn't regret choosing. For the next week Izuku was instructed to do some odd jobs around the streets. Being taught how to steal things and look professional, he was of course grateful for Wakako for taking him in, but at the same time, he was ashamed of himself doing this sort of thing. For the cyberware, however, he wants to see if he can get material for it. Wakako and you want these materials? And he nods. Izuku, a small project that I want to do. Wakako, HM, if you do good enough, consider it as your payment then. Now then, 
On with your lessons, soon he followed her to the offices, where he is being taught how to speak English. The typical hello or how are you. But the more he learned, the more he able to pick it up. And at the same time, he still learned education from one of the Tiger Claw members, his nickname out in the streets. Well, he doesn't have one yet, but he will when he makes a name of himself. Wakako, and of course in their alphabet they have these letters called vowels, and believe me that a lot of words cannot be formed without them. Izuku nods learning his EU words, and then came to writing then math, and of course being taught how to engineer things, a trains and builds up his reflexes along with stealth, putting everything he has to make things work out dot dot it even impresses her. Seeing such a young boy with this much determination and will to achieve his goal. Of course there was the whole hero thing. Wakako, heroes are never in these parts. Only through restrictions they cannot be allowed here. Your father was an underground hero, which allowed him to stay in the shadows and away from the law. Of course even they knew about his deeds here. Of course he would come to me for one thing only. Izuku, and what was that? Wakako, help. He would want some information. I am the one with the most knowledge that happens around here. We're now going to head to Watson, where you will begin your first real gig. And he was shivering a little knowing in Watson there are scavs. And the word moral is all but foreign to them. Wakako, those pathetic scavs have stolen something important from me. You will find it, and take it. Kill if you must. Oh, and here opening a drawer to bring out. A knife and a pistol. Izuku, WW, wait, I can't kill someone. Wakako, here in Night City it is unavoidable to not get blood on your hands. I can tell when one of my boys got himself killed with Valentinos, where they found you. Izuku. Wakako, if you want to be a hero, you must also be prepared to do the dirty work. So, will you do it? Izuku was in a conflicted state. He really doesn't want to take a life. But at the same time, they're scavs. They are the worst of the worst. Izumi could be one. And then he remembers her again, Izumi. And her friends, the scavs, hurt the innocent. Killing a few of these guys will help out the people right, he hopes. Izuku, I will do it, Wakako, and again, she smiles. Wakako, good boy. You will be taken to Watson immediately. Here's more information on the gig and she hands him a USB drive. So he takes out his little device he made. And he goes out. He sees the driver waiting for him. He gets in. And they are on their way to Watson. He inserts the chip. Gig, her shell weird name. Detail, a very important item was stolen from me. The item is locked and secured in this lockup case here. The scavs will try everything in their power to open it. The key is in this file. The scav leader is known for trying to imitate torture scenes from movies he watches on a daily basis, so try to avoid him or kill him if possible. Reward. Your supplies little Midoriya and he knows now. Looking at the suitcase dot dot it was fairly small, and it seems to hold something important. He would question or take a look himself but it seems she wants what's in it. But he has an idea. He saved it for when he gets there and soon the car stops. Your destination, and he nods before thanking the man. Don't let me attend your funeral, and he drives off. Soon he sees the old abandoned building. Well, that's what it looks like from outside. He looks at the gate and sees the scav symbol on it. He worries what could happen to him. He reached and brought out his small knife. Sure has has some novice training, but sending him out right of the bat like this is suicide. Why did she send him out here? He can't screw this up now, using his size to his advantage. He crawls up the building sides and slips through the ventilation shaft. A classic sneak move, so he wanders around trying to navigate his way into the rooms below. But it seems they really didn't want anyone to get in so most of them were blocked. That is until he ends up falling. The vent broke underneath him, and soon he was in a daze. But the first thing he sees is a body that was mutilated beyond recognition. Another one was a man. He was headless, 
and the other was a woman who was skinned and hanged upside down. If he wanted to scream in horror he would, but he was soon cut short by loud ruffling noises coming from below. What the hell was that? He could barely understand them, but he decided to waste no time and ignores his fear, and he wedged himself under the pile of bodies in the corner. Soon the door burst open, and he sees the scav member wandering around. All right you shithead dot dot com eon out, he yelled out. He made no noise, even going so far as to pretend he's dead. His knife, and the gun, maybe with a perfect shot he could. Kill him. What they did to these people is unforgivable. He picks up a piece of debris, and throws it at the vent causing it leak out more dust. What the drawing his attention to it now. He walks up to it to look. Izuku then crawls out of the body pile and slowly makes his way to the scav member. Once he was close enough, he brought out the knife. And soon he goes for the kill, jumping up, and then he stabs him in the back of the head, causing him to let out the death groan, breathing out the last bit of air in his system. Before he started to twitch, twisting it a little more made it stop. He pulls out the knife. His first kill. He actually killed someone. He'll cry about it later. Right now he needs to find the case. Looking out the bathroom, he sees more scav members messing around or just talking with each other. Sneaking along the desks, he notices a small opening in one of the rooms. He walks up to it to see the hole lead into the other room, giving him a shortcut away from the others. Soon he crawls into it. And soon, he sees it. The case in a small storage room Wakako was right dot dot it. They really did try everything to get it open. He looks around the case and the room to see if anything was rigged onto it. So far none. He gets the key out to open it and finds a pair of glasses and a small child's bracelet made of gold. He puts it in his small bag, not caring about it, and then he brings it out. A bomb. He asked one of the tiger claws to make it for him, and even showed him how to disarm or arm it. He plants it into the case, and soon it activate. He puts the key on the floor to make it seem like it was an idiotic move, so he leaves. And sure enough the scav leader walks into the room. HM hey get over here. He called one of them over soon he grabs their head and knocks them on the floor. What the hell is that? Pointing at the key. Scav? Um, it's a key? Not just any key, the key to the case. The resources we wasted trying to get the thing open, and you just decided to overlook it. Soon he pulls out his magnum and shoots him in the head. No mercy, no thought, dot dot, it just happened. Izuku smiles knowing what's going to happen, but he doesn't want to be there when it goes off, so he makes a quick exit towards one of the fire escapes passing by the other scavs guarding the place. He soon drops down from the ladder, and he bolts out of there, and he makes the call. Wakako, I see you retrieved them. There is a car waiting for you, and he sees them, but not without a huge explosion going off in the building, causing the entire top part to go in flames. Get in, and he jumped in while the car speeds away. After all of that, he walks into the offices again. The regulars see him and wave. Guess it's normal for a kid to be wandering in this area. Wakako, bring it here, and he puts the items on the desk. And she examines them before she puts them at a small shrine with the other items. Wakako, now then. Your reward and soon one of her men brought out a case filled with the material he needs for his project. Wakako, this is the type of rewards you will get if you do a good job. And also here's a bonus and soon another case was given to him, filled with some money. Wakako, you may be a novice in your training, but that will help you with small-time jobs like these young one. Now I know you are eager to go and work on whatever you're doing, but I have another lesson to teach you in Night City. There is a certain skill that is required to have, and that is to aim a gun. I see that you didn't even fire the thing at all and you only relied on the knife. Yes, it helped you take down one scav, but if it's with other factions, they won't be so forgiving. You will be training with man named Winston. He is starting a gun shop down in Watson again. 
There he will teach you everything you will need to know about guns, how you will use this information is up to you. But for now I see you want to rest. You may go. Rest up. For this is not the end of your training. And the road to be a hero is far more demanding if you want to make it to the big leagues. Izuku bows, thank you very much Okada-sensei, and soon he gets his cases and walks to his room upstairs. Sure it's not enough, but it's keeping warm and away from harm. For now. Izumi walked again with her mother out in town, looking for at least a sign of Izuku. She can't believe this. He really had the guts to up and leave just like that. Soon she noticed her mother stopped. Izumi, what's going on? She kneels on the ground to pick up. A piece of tattered clothing. The pattern was obviously all might themed, so they began to follow it. Making some calls Izumi and Inko follow the trail. They noticed that it leads up to a road. That has not turns and was just straight. But Izumi noticed that Inko was pale and stared in horror. Izumi, mom, what is it? Asking her. Inko, that's where the shipyard is. Where cargo ships depart to send materials to different countries. Izumi, okay, but what does it have? To do she stopped noticing another piece of cloth that leads into that direction. This has gone bad. Now they can't do anything. Even if they try to send heroes out to find her brother dotted quotas useless. He's not in the country anymore. He's truly gone. Inko and Izumi just fell over in disbelief, hearing voices calling out to them asking them if they are all right. But it's not. They had failed big time. The biggest F in history. Izuku Midoriya left this country to start a new life to find a better family. Or so they thought. Izuku was dropped off at the tall building, again taking the elevator to the top. He looks out the window seeing how Night City looks like from a high height. Without all the crime and mess it up things he's seen, this place would be very nice and beautiful to live in soon the elevator opens, and of course the residents are very confused seeing a seven-year-old boy go into a gun shop. Soon he walks up to the counter and rings the bell. Ring ring. No one. Ring ring. Still no one. Ring 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 ring. All right, that's enough, taking the bell away. The man was kind of balding, but he was somewhat fit. Izuku with little English he knows. Izuku, are you? Is Winston? Shit. Wilson, it's Wilson, damn it. Sai Wakako was serious. A kid? Wants to learn how to shoot. I mean, call me a gun expert, but holy shit, you're too young for this. Izuku, Wakako said you would. Help. Wilson, ah. Uh, Shit. Find.com E on exiting the locked area. He soon locks the doors to the front to make sure no one comes in. Wilson, I can see you are training kid. Even though I heard it's for a week, so you don't have much muscles. The gun I would recommend. He opens a locker filled with cases. He searches through them. Wilson, I know I kept one here somewhere. Ah. There it is taking it out, he pulls out a unique-looking pistol. Wilson cocks it and loads it, here kid handing it to him. Izuku just carefully holds it keeping his finger off the trigger. Wilson, all right, this is Unity. A standard firearm, not much kick to it, but it's enough for a sprout like you. Izuku, sprout? Wilson, your hair, you look like a bush. Izuku, what is your quirk? Asking him. Wilson, oh me. I have none kid. I'm quirkless and Izuku was surprised. Izuku, so. Am I. Wilson, quirkless aren't as common to come across, but there is a lot of us here. Don't worry kid, we won't judge ya. Wilson, right very little understanding. Okay, let's head on over here. Izuku follows him to the gun range in the store, he sees a couple of other people practicing. Oh, there's that girl that was with Jackie. Wilson who? Then she recognizes Izuku. Hey kid, what are doing here? Wilson, two words. Wakako's idea, then she facepalms herself. Really? A kid? Wilson, hey, he's quite the tough one. He just did his first gig and she was shocked even more. 
Are you kidding? I still can't do them on my own. Izuku, high waving at her, very innocent like. Oh right, you don't know my name, you know Jackie's and he nods. Right, well my name's V, that's it. And you? Izuku, Izuku, nice to meet you. V, V, it's a nickname. Maybe through time I can tell you my real name. But hey, what was it like? Izuku, scavs and she winced. V, yeah scavs are not the greatest thing to come across. Wilson, all right we're wasting enough time dot dot com e on kid we need to get you shooting like cousin Wilson. V, everyone knows you're the best Wilson. In the gun branch. Izuku gets up a small stool and he was ready to train this V has got to see. Wilson, all right kid just grip the gun like this and put your arms in this position. Remember you're going to feel a big kick so. Aim through the sights here and don't close your eyes use both of them he looks ahead and focuses. Soon he sees the target. He suddenly feels alive. For the first time he can feel confident. He aims accordingly and fires. Of course the kick he warned him about caused him to be knocked back. He tries to aim the gun upward but Wilson caught him. Wilson, hey hey hey, warned ya and V giggles a little. V, nice try kid. Wilson, I wouldn't be too sure V look and she looks at the target and sees he was just a couple of centimeters from the center. V, oh shit. Izuku looks at the target. Is it bad? Shivering now. Waiting to be hit soon Wilson lifts him up, but he puts the gun down. Wilson, kid that was amazing. Wilson, you missed the greatest I've ever seen. Also how did you get in? Jackie, I just took the back door. V Jackie, there is no back door. Jackie, I kind of took pick locked the door. Wilson, there's a reason you have a damn phone. God soon Jackie sees Izuku. Jackie, hey Chimako, how you doing? Izuku, all right and Jackie was wide-eyed. Jackie, see I told you Chika he could speak English. V, no he's still learning. Izuku this is Jackie. The annoying friends that nearly got us killed. Jackie, it's not my fault Padre wanted the urn. Oh, and you met V, she has a stick up her ass. V, shut up. Izuku, Izuku, Midoriya. Jackie, Izuku, Merhoria. V, it's Midoriya Jackie, just call him Sprout. Or Green Bean. Izuku, HM, tilting his head in confusion. Jackie looks at the target. Hey, you almost got the center. Still can't beat my record, huh? V, that wasn't me. Jackie. Then who fired? Wilson, this little guy here. He's definitely going to be in the big leagues soon. Jackie, hey, he's not only a small kid. He can shoot V. We should invite him to our group. V, really? He's like seven. Jackie, and he can fire better than you. V, wow. Izuku, join. Jackie, yeah, we get to some small gigs here and there, but you get used to it. So what do you say? Izuku looks at Wilson. Wilson, don't look at me kid. You need to take it up with Wakako. V figured. You know what fine be that way. Let's go to Wakako Jackie. Jackie, hey keep practicing. Your aim, if you get good enough. For sure it'll help ya in a long run. Izuku nods. Soon the duo leaves. Wilson, right now then, where were we? and he continues the training. V and Jackie are going up to the small bike he has. V, you really need to tune it up. Jackie, hey don't disrespect the wheels Chica, it's gotten us through a lot. V, you mean 16 shootings and 4 crashes that 2 of them were caused by your reckless driving. Jackie, hey I'm a pretty good driver. V, you broke my arm from the last crash. Jackie, and was it my fault that you decided to jump off at the last moment? V, I thought you going to fall into the river. Jackie, I told you I had it under control. Soon he avoids an incoming car. V smirks. 
Jackie, don't you dare say it, and they continue driving. Soon they head up to Japantown, and finally they make it to Jig Jig Street. Parking the bike, they both get off. V. Ug. Jig Jig. Jackie, what about it? V. Getting tired off people mistaking me for a joydoy. Jackie, A. Don't blame M. V. Glares at him. Jackie, come on, take a joke, will ya? Soon they made it to Wakako's offices. You have an appointment? One of her guards asked them. V. We need to talk to Wakako. About her little mercenary project, he knew they were talking about Izuku. All right, and he steps aside. Jackie, hey amigo, could you tell me what's your workout routine? I do a little lifting myself, but I would like to know how you do it soon. He was pulled in by his ear. Jackie, I, 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 Wakako, no rogue. I have no reason to attack one of your own. Please, my boys are well trained. The would never do that soon she sees them. Wakako, I have some unexpected guest. Soon she hangs up and looks at the two. Jackie, hey Wakako, your fifth husband alive still. V elbows him. Wakako just looks at him. For now, why are you two here? I don't have a contract. V, we came here to discuss about your little project involving a little boy, and she sighs. Wakako, H.M., has he done anything wrong, V? Jackie, actually no. V, we wanted to request something. Wakako, the two future legends of Night City has a request. My, my, what honor could I be bestowed with? Sarcastic. V, look, we want to know if it's okay for the kid to join us in our gigs. Wakako, hmm, how interesting. You want me to risk the life of a seven-year-old boy? V, don't act all like you're shocked. We know you sent him on a gig with the scavs. Jackie, she did? V, yes, well, I knew. But it doesn't matter. He needs someone to look up to. Or at least let us help guide him to survive here. No matter what age you are, Night City will not grant mercy. Wakako just stares for a moment thinking about it. Then she looks back. Wakako, okay, I see what you're getting at. Okay, you can take him along, but know this no matter what, even if he dies, his death is on you too, am I clear? Jackie, the boy dies, we get the dust typical of you. V deal. Also another one. The kid can stay with us from time to time. Wakako, I could care less where he's at. As long as he is getting the education I'm providing for him. V and Jackie smile, now soon they said their thanks and leave and of course later on. Izuku comes back from the gun shop. Wakako, I see you are done with your practicing. Go on. Your English lesson will begin soon. Izuku, okay? Wakako, and one other thing. I approve of you going on gigs with those two delinquents. So do me a favor and train harder. They may be older, but they are reckless. It should be good training for you. Izuku was somewhat excited even though he knew them for a little bit. He felt glad he will be with them. But oh boy, is he going to be in one hell of a ride. Q Major Time Skip Year 1 Izuku has gone through a major learning curve when he talks in English dot dot it quote s still broken, but he can understand what people are saying, along with his skill in the knife and gun. Of course he now does small time gigs with V and Jackie, of course his kill count only increased more. Izuku, okay so what do you need me for? Leading him into the house. Jackie soon brought him into the kitchen. V Jackie, happy birthday Kichimako. And he was looking at a small cake on the table with Mama Wells there. Mama Wells. The one who earns the Mama name. She has treated him like her own son. She worries for him. And even though she doesn't approve of them going on these gigs, she lets them. Of course his family just gave on him being gone forever now. They had stopped looking for him and just prayed that he was okay. Year 5, Izuku is now 12 years old. He can now speak fluent English and some Spanish from Jackie's family. They all welcomed him in. And of course he was now building his cyberware being taught by a famous surgeon and mechanic named Vic. 
Of course, when he told Vic about the cyberware. Vic, listen kid. This cannot fall into the hands of any agency. The things here in this book is too dangerous for them to acquire his quirk. Allowed him to see things in X-ray. So he helped saved up on the medical field. Of course. Izuku, so, is it possible to help teach me? Vic, since you're just twelve, I guess I can give you a couple of lessons. V and Jackie are surprised on how smart the kid is. They really scored big time on choosing him as their new member. Year 9, now 16 years old Izuku now has honed in on expert level combat skills. He is now known as a weapons specialist and a brutal combatant. He has grown colder and ruthless, becoming somewhat of a douchebag. This is the present time. This is the day where he saves someone from their own hell. Izuku was waiting for another call from Wakako. Wakako, I have another job for you. You might find this very important to you. Izuku was shining his gun, and of course his favorite powered magnum he made. Comrade's Hammer Its single bullet is an explosive round that could also pierce several feet of concrete. Izuku, what is it? Wakako, a cargo ship was ambushed. Apparently they have been transporting slaves, or kidnapped civilians. Izuku, and how is this supposed to appeal to me? He's seen enough shit to know this is nothing. Wakako, well you need to see it yourself. Inside the file is a number. It's connected to Yeyurazu Core. I heard his daughter was kidnapped, and there is a high reward for her safe return. Izuku, what's her quirk, and why is she so important? Wakako, her quirk is a very valuable one. Dot, dot, it allows her to create anything using fat from her body, and she must know its atomic structure. Izuku, pretty funny. The Corpo girl has a quirk that can give them everything they want. Wakako, indeed. But besides that, you must go in and save her. Johnny teasing him. That name they gave him. He doesn't like it. But he dealt with it. Izuku, all right. Am I allowed to bring in those two? Wakako, am I your mother? Izuku, and no. Wakako, I don't care how you do this job, all that matters is how you'll complete it. Izuku, all right. Soon he makes a call to V and Jackie and to meet them at Lizzie's bar. Izuku gets in his car and drives there. Throughout the years he's made a name of himself, being known as Johnny. Champion of the common folk also. Johnny the biggest douche. Izuku Raido. Let's see here. Momo Yeyurazu daughter of the CEO of Yeyurazu Corps. How surprising driving to Lizzie's. Soon he parks his car and gets out. Seeing the bouncers. Hey Johnny boy, she looks at him. Izuku, the two came? Not yet. But unless you have some time for another round. Izuku smirks. Not today but some other time getting close to her. A hum he turns around to see Jackie. Jackie, not in public Chimako. Izuku, I'm not a kid anymore soon V comes up. V, doesn't mean you're not a kid to us ruffling his hair. Izuku, hey. V, all right Wakako gave you another job. Izuku, right. See ya talking to the bouncer and she smirks at him. Jackie, so when will you find a permanent one? Izuku, no clue, don't care. Too much work in my hands. V, and yet you have time for them. Izuku, anyway back to the job. It's really simple. They sat down at a table. Izuku, we have a big one on our hands. Jackie, ooh, now I'm listening. V, how big are we talking? Izuku, does saving a kidnapped corpo's daughter seem big to you? And Jackie spits out his drink. V, ugh, Jack. Jackie, I'm sorry he made a good point. Izuku, haha. <laughs> well, yeah, obviously there's a big reward on it, and I need to make sure we don't screw this up. So, you two in? Jackie, you kidding this type of job doesn't come every day count me in. V, sigh beside this oaf here spitting on me. I suppose we could use the money. All right, kid, you can count on us and Izuku smiles. Izuku, Yes, excited now. Their first big job. 
but at what cost will it be? So, this was the end of part 1 of this series. Stay tuned for next part of this series, and if you like this video don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. Until next time.